In this lesson, we'll be talking about the life functions in homeostasis. So the life functions, seven of them, are absolutely necessary for every single organism to survive. Okay? Um, I'm going to star reproduction here. And when I get to it, I'll explain why. Reproduction is not necessary for the survival of an individual organism, but it is for a species, okay? So all eight life functions are needed to be considered a lot, okay? To be able to maintain homeostasis, all right? So transport involves the absorption, distribution, and circulation of materials, uh, either in a cell, if it's a single cell organism, or throughout the body if it's multicellular. Respiration refers to cellular respiration, and this deals with the release of energy from food or nutrients, okay? Uh, when you think respiration, you should think mitochondria, you should think ATP, uh, you should obviously be thinking energy, and you should be thinking aerobic and oxygen as well, all right? Now, I start reproduction because uh, there are plenty of humans and other organisms that live completely fine without producing new organisms, okay? So, at the individual level, reproduction is not necessary for survival. However, for a species to survive, reproduction is definitely necessary. Regulation is the control and coordination of internal levels and processes. This has to do with the nervous system, the endocrine system. Big part of homeostasis refers to regulation. Synthesis, or what you might know as dehydration synthesis, uh, talks about putting small molecules together to make larger ones. Okay, building larger molecules and structures from smaller building blocks. Excretion is the removal of metabolic or liquid and gaseous waste. Nutrition is obtaining and processing food. Now, there's two types of nutrition. There are those heterotrophic organisms, which do heterotrophic nutrition, which means that they must uh, ingest, eat, or absorb their food. And then there's autotrophic nutrition, okay, plants. Uh, certain bacteria, certain algae that use the sun's energy to make their own food. All right, and growth is increasing an organism's size or the number of cells it has. Again, so in order to live and to carry out homeostasis, you need seven of these life functions absolutely. Otherwise, you will result in failure to maintain homeostasis, disease, or death. So metabolism is the sum of all the chemical reactions in your body, okay? It's all of the life processes working together um, and life activities working together as well. So I had mentioned this before, an autotroph is an organism that can make its own food using the sun's energy, okay? You might hear autotrophic nutrition, all right? You should be thinking plants algae, certain bacteria, and autotrophs have chloroplasts, right? Those are the sites of photosynthesis that allow them to utilize the sun's energy. A heterotroph is an organism that must ingest organic molecules for nutrition, okay? These macromolecules in the form of carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, all right? Uh, you could think of heterotrophic nutrition, you should be thinking of animals, and also mushrooms, because mushrooms absorb their nutrients from the environment around them. Homeostasis is a big concept on the Reed's exam, okay? It deals with maintaining an internal balance regardless of the external environment. If we break down the word, homeo refers to similar or same. Stasis is status. Same status, same state. Steady state, okay? Uh, your internal body temperature, your blood pH, your blood sugar, all um, your body wants to stay in a very small range, all right? So even if it's 110 degrees outside, your body temperature is going to stay at 98.6, okay? Even if you jump in a pool that has a pH of about 7.9 or 6.5, your blood pH is going to stay around 7.0 to 7.2, okay? You should be thinking regulation, the nervous system, the endocrine system, and failure to maintain homeostasis or these same statuses results in death or disease. Viruses, bacteria, fungus, parasites, and other pathogens will attempt to enter body cells and organisms that interfere with their mechanisms for homeostasis. A feedback mechanism is an organism's way to control and regulate internal levels like pH, blood glucose, or temperature. Okay? It helps them to maintain homeostasis. 
It's your body's response to stimuli or um, observable differences in the external environment. Okay. Uh, feedback mechanisms might affect your heart rate, your blood sugar, uh, the stomates in plants. Okay, the final product in a reaction or a process will affect the start. Okay, so what you might see in the regions is a diagram like this. You have molecule A being converted into C. Excuse me, being converted into B, being converted into C using enzymes. That's what E stands for. Okay. Now, the process, the objective of the process is to make C. All right, once I've made C, I don't need to do the process anymore. So the final product will go back to the beginning and turn the process off. That's what the negative sign means, okay? You might also see an X, something like that, okay? Um, another feedback mechanism might be breathing rate, all right? So uh, when your body increases physical activity, you have a higher demand for oxygen in your cells, okay? Um, and you need to speed up your breathing. So what happens is your breathing speeds up, the oxygen gets delivered, and once that oxygen level is met, then the breathing will come back down because you've achieved what you wanted. Okay? Negative feedback, as illustrated down here, is a process where the final product will go back and shut off the beginning pro process. All right?